Hello again, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo with the last segment now on the uh, second video, and this is the uh, crown preparation on tooth number 11, which is the upper left permanent canine, or permanent uh, cuspid, as we call it. It has the one cusp, but it is the cornerstone tooth. It's very sharp looking like the dog's tooth. That's why we call it the canine tooth. Um, a little history here about our preparation. We're going to scribe the the margin first. It's going to slope and kind of hug the cemento enamel junction, which is on every tooth uh, given out by this this company. Um, you want to possibly put this in your mannequin and then trace the gum line out, and then go a little bit above that gum line. So that's what this line represents. Uh, the margin is the replica of right above the gum line or maybe just uh, right at this the gum tissue. The next um, thing that we're going to prepare is we're going to scribe the incisal edge and uh, so that we get enough reduction of that. So first things first I'll draw out this margin and here we go through the interproximal area where the papilla is a piece of gum tissue that's in between every tooth as you go toward the back of the mouth the papilla gets flatter and then this incisal the ledge and we want about two millimeters of reduction so draw it in two millimeters of reduction and you can go ahead and reduce that immediately as well if you'd like to or you can do it progressively um, as you're reducing the planes, there's three planes every tooth reduction. So I say we score it and then we'll come back and see how far we did. All right. So let's score those areas and we'll do our depth cuts, three plane reduction, and then see what happens. The last part is to reduce this lingual. Now you can take the half the diameter of the burr to get your about 1.25 reduction. There's another drill bit called the uh, football diamond. And I'll show that to you. It looks like this. And we'll reduce that portion with the football diamond, the lingual portion, so it'll look like like this when we're done. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn my suction on. And my power goes to four again. We're just going to score the margin first. And I'll do that with a little higher magnification. There we are. So I'm just using the toe of the burr. And lightly. You don't have to dig in. You're really not, it's not necessary to dig in at this point. In the mouth, uh, you know, you're going to use the soft tissue as your judge. Um, you could score in the mouth a little bit. It's or you can go ahead and do your depth cuts. I like the idea of scoring a little bit here because it, it gives you a reference point of which to follow in case you happen to uh, erase, accidentally erase the pencil mark. So again it's a sloping shoulder that you're going to end up with something parabolic and the interprox area. Okay, so let's um, let's measure this uh, the anterior segment, uh, the inside of the ledge. So we want about uh, one and a half millimeters reduction to two millimeter reduction. So we'll score that at 1.5. All right, and just flip that around. Now the question is, well, do I just go ahead and reduce my incisal the way I did the back teeth, right? Well, I think for this for this exercise, we're going to leave it to last. Let's see what happens first when we walk through our planes of, of reduction. All right. Of course, first plane of reduction is going to be the gingival. We'll start on that first and start with our depth cuts right on the facial aspect. 
I'm going to go about half the distance, the diameter of my the tip of my burr, and then I'll go ahead and extend the rest. all the way out toward the incisal edge. Now you can see as I do that I'm erasing that incisal edge. So let's go ahead and reduce our incisal edge. I'll do my depth cuts all the way down to make our lives easy. Same thing here. Same thing here, and that's it. We're done with that, and now there, and smooth it a little bit using the side of the burr. Okay, now step two. Let's do our vertical cuts. Depth cuts are important. Try to get your depth cuts close to each other as you're reducing the three planes. And the first plane is gingival, then the facial. Notice I'm not completely sinking the burr all the way in the way I did the posterior teeth. As you need a little less I want to say 1.25 as you get, or 1.2 as you get toward the incisal, and right about here might be about 9.9, .9, and then right at the gum line is going to be like maybe even a half a millimeter to almost a millimeter. You get the idea. Just kind of progressively remove tooth structure. Start with the toe of the burr. and then extend the rest. There we go. And you can feel the motor starts to get a little less, uh, a little more resistance when you push a little harder. Okay, so that's my facial reduction. Now I'm going to do my interproximal reduction, and that's very short, by the way. Again, you want to keep the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth. If you don't do that, you're, you're really missing out. You're, you're going to cause undercuts. So a quick review again, long axis of the tooth. Here's the burr, and here's your tooth, and you're in the long axis of the root of the tooth. All right. Again, dropping my depth cuts all in a row. You can use a finger or a tooth holder or support. We have them, those little tooth clamps. And if you make your depth cuts a little too deep, don't worry about it. Just get the idea you're you're prepping in planes. This is kind of fun for me to do because uh, I use a different handpiece all day long, and here I am using the same one that you're using. So it puts me at your same level as you guys as far as prepability is concerned. I'm just going to increase now my magnification. So that you can get a better look at what's what's going on here. Now I'm just basically following my margin. I don't want to deepen my margin anymore, and I'm just more or less contouring a shape that's very similar to that of a hawk bill. And I'll show you that right after I move this segment right here. A hawk's bill has a or the beak of a hawk has a certain look to it. Uh, we used to use that term a lot with our labs. Uh, we're hawk billing that preparation in, and you know we want to keep it in. 
and keep it contoured. So again, it starts to take on that look of a hawk's bill. Let me get this out of the way next. Again, it's a sloping shoulder. And we're just making sure that we have even amounts of reduction. Over reducing is going to give you something more like a TP. Um, this area is important right near the incisal, making sure that that is tapered. So there you have it. That's the prep as it comes in. It's like an S or a hawk's bill. And then let's go right through the interprox here, interproximal area. I'm just keeping it right on the same path as where I scored that margin. Coming down through the mesial lingual now. And then the lingual aspect. Uh, my lingual margin might be a little deep. Okay. So, smooth everything now, get it done, and get that finished. You don't want too many lumps or, or hills here. You want to make sure that your interproximal walls or your axial walls are all tapered and not too parallel. So use the long axis of the tooth and the side of the burr. So when you're finished now you can see there's a nice sloping shoulder all the way around. So the last thing we need to do now is um, is this lingual reduction here. Alright, so we're going to quickly switch our burr to our football diamond. I'll do that now. Again, when you're changing burrs, just remember that you don't have to over-tighten um, just to snug things up. I'm going to go ahead and remove this burr and put in our football diamond. Seems like appropriate for this time of the year. We have the start of football season and our Miami team is uh, undefeated so far. So, see how far that goes. Um, so here we are back with our tooth. So our goal now is we want to get um, a good even reduction on the lingual. Well, how do you do that? Well, you can reduce half of it and look at it as you're doing it. The other thing you can do is you can take the burr, this burr, and do a slight depth cut to it. Um, I like the idea of just let's do half of it and let's just see what we have. Now lingual deduction doesn't have to be as, I want to say, as heavy as the facial reduction because no, the thickness on the lingual, um, it, even though it has to be uniform, um, for front teeth it doesn't have to be as, as uh, reduced sometimes where we want to get a visual effect from our restoration on the facial. Uh, we'll go about a millimeter and a quarter on the lingual. So let's do a, a little toe depth cut here. And um, let the burr, of course, do the work. And I'll stay right about there as far as finding out how, how deep we made it. All right, so I'll take my periodontal probe and I'll measure it. And it's about a millimeter, almost a millimeter and a quarter. I'll just take a little bit more off. And that should be should be it for the lingual. So just take just go in a little bit further and then continue that. I just like to stay 
as much as I can as far as following the contours. And of course you check it on your articulator so you can bring this tooth back into class or if you have an articulator at home you can actually check the re amount of reduction that's necessary. I would say 1.25 and 1.5 should be more than enough to make this final restoration strong. Now you can see now you can just smooth any rough edges except your margins, okay. <laughs> Uh, another little tip I got from a dental student, but before I tell you that tip, I want to go over a couple things with you on this prep. So, number one, you should be able to look straight down and see that there aren't any undercuts all the way around. Number two, um, you should have a sloping margin, a sloping shoulder all the way throughout and uh, you should definitely have a well-defined axial wall throughout, especially this lingual axial wall uh, for retention. Your retention is going to come from this direction to this direction, buccal or facial to lingual. So here's the tip. We switch burrs, go back to your um, your tapered diamond, rounded end tapered diamond, and uh, and then just use a speed that's a little faster. And you're going to use a very feathered touch when you do this. So, alrighty. And so, here's how we do it. We just turn this up. Now we're going to go probably about six or eight you're going to get a little more rotation now on your burr, a little more speed. And now the idea is polishing. So you're lightly touching your prep. And your focus now is getting that margin perfected perfectly. So you can visualize it. And then when you can take your impression, it's going to be you know, something that you can see perfectly, whether using a microscope or loops or just your natural eye. And just take that all the way around. Light feather touch. Lots of movement. And uh, you can see the motor's kind of drowning out my voice. I'll turn the suction off as well. And uh, let's just take a good look at our final product. Here it is. There was our goal. And there's our final. Back off the mag a little bit. Again, just comparing the two. Looks like we did pretty well today. All right, keep practicing. That's what makes a really good dentist, you know, uh, not an average dentist, but a, a dentist that is really committed to, uh, to doing dentistry at a high level. And take it step one, step two, step three, just uh, just the way I showed you. And you should come up with a nice result. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. Um, we'll see you on a, uh, hopefully on another update uh, when they do come out. Um, we'll have more teeth available as well. Take care and keep practicing.